Welcome back to For Your Child's Health. With me this morning is Dr. Curtis Augusti, neurosurgeon at Children's Hospital Oakland. All right, we just met Ashley. Her mother was describing hydrocephalus and shunts to her in, in, in a way that a child would understand. Mm -hmm. You brought a model here, you actually have a shunt. Show us exactly what, what we're talking about. Yeah, so uh, it's, I wish brain surgery was this easy, but um, we'll just show you that the fluid-filled spaces on the inside of the brain are called ventricles. Um, and you can see just an outline of that ventricle here. And in Ashley's case, uh, again, the imbalance was there. So she was making too much fluid and couldn't absorb it fast enough. So what we did was helped her with something called a shunt. Um, and there's a catheter, a very small, slender catheter, catheter mm -hmm. that would be placed into the ventricle um, at any point along the ventricle. Usually it's, it's in the back or up on top, and in Ashley, Ashley's case it was on top. Um, and it threads underneath the skin, travels behind the ear, over the collarbone, and it plugs in into the abdominal cavity. And you, know, you hear your stomach gurgling, and that's because it's a thin film of fluid surrounding our intestines. And all we're doing is adding this fluid through the shunt to that fluid and her abdomen will absorb the fluid for Doctor, her. I mean, will this shunt stay with her the rest of her life or is there a chance that she might actually outgrow this imbalance? Yes, absolutely, there is a chance, um, but uh, usually we are watching them very carefully as they grow up um, and we'll be taking surveillance pictures of their brain and listening to how their symptoms are over time. And uh, sometimes we take these pictures and um, it looks as if the shunt is not working. We wouldn't necessarily advocate to take that out, um, but we, our hope is that um, whether or not she um, needs the shunt, we fixed her hydrocephalus problem. All right, we noticed she was playing on the playground and you know, seemed to be hampered in any way. Are children with these going to be affected? Do they feel it? Do they? Does it change their behavior? Usually not. Um, if they run their fingers uh, firm enough over their skin, they will feel the little bump of the valve. Uh, but for the most part, we don't place any restrictions on our kids with uh, ventricular peritoneal shunts. We say uh, go and play and, and be happy just like all the other kids. And occasionally, um, for uh, kids who are very active, there will be little problems with the shunt, a little disconnection here, a little fracture there. Um, and sometimes they do need to be revised for that reason. But um, no, we, we, we want our, our, our kids with hydrocephalus to, to live as active and uh, happy enough life as, as any other kid. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about something else you treat, epilepsy. Mm -hmm. First, describe exactly what happens in epilepsy and, and yeah. then how, how do you treat it? Yeah, well, this is one of the reasons why I'm so uh, fascinated by the brain. For, for whatever reason, this, this, this clump of cells um, allows us to do things like talk and, and think and understand and move, and it's all based on very microscopic electrical activity uh, from nerve cells. When you have epilepsy and you're having seizures from your epilepsy, it's because some spot along your brain is firing abnormally. Uh, and what we do as neurosurgeons is we try to find those spots that are firing abnormally. Sometimes it's because there is a tumor nearby. Sometimes it's because um, you were just born with a, a spot in your brain that has just developed abnormally and it is, is very irritable. And at, at times we can control the seizures just with medications alone. At times we see something on an MRI or a CAT scan that would indicate that this is probably the reason why they're having the seizures. And at that point we would become involved and uh, perform surgery to remove that, that hot spot, that hyperactive spot of brain. Okay. So. Craniosynostosis. Mm -hmm. Did I pronounce it correctly? You did. Yeah. All right. What, what is that? And, and explain the procedure. We actually have some footage here, so we'll be able to roll that and you can kind of walk mm -hmm. us through it. Mm -hmm. Uh, but what is it, first off? Well, when we're born, uh, much when we're living in the Bay Area here, so everybody understands plate tectonics, um, we have these islands of, of bone um, that aren't fully connected, and they're able to move alongside each other. But sometimes the sutures, the, the uh, boundaries between the bones, get fused prematurely. And if that's the case, and you have a head that wants to expand, mm -hmm. as the head grows and you have this one spot that is solid and not growing, it creates a, a misshaping of, of the head. And that's what craniosynostosis is, a premature closure of one of those suture lines between bones. Okay. Okay, and there's surgery that you can perform to correct that. And let's go ahead and roll it. Let's get a look uh, at, at what's going on here. Okay, uh, walk us through this, doctor. Yes, uh, so um, it's a, a joint uh, effort between neurosurgeons and uh, 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 plastic surgeons to really get the, the most optimal result. Um, you know, we, we spend so much time training and we come at this very complicated problem from two very different perspectives but with the same uh, goal. Um, the neurosurgeon's job really is to uh, provide access to these islands of bone and to isolate the islands of bone um, so that we can then uh, reshape the bones and put them in the most cosmetic um, uh, form that we can. And now you mentioned mm -hmm 
important teamwork, and it's very important. You also work with another doctor we're going to be meeting very shortly. Mm -hmm. um, why is that important to have the teamwork? Well, well for one, it's, it's much more fun uh, to do something like this with a, with a teammate. Um, but really, to have uh, two sets of hands, two sets of eyes, at, uh, most of the time we're, we actually spend um, getting each other's opinion. Um, and uh, again, the, the real goal is, is to uh, acquire the, the most optimal cosmetic uh, outcome here. And, and to, to have someone from a brain perspective and from a plastic surgery perspective, um, it, it really benefits the child. Okay, yeah. we'll explain that a little further. We've got to go to break, and uh, you'll, uh, folks will probably appreciate the fact that we edited that very, <laughs> very <laughs> heavily. <laughs> uh, for more information or to support Children's Hospital Oakland, go to childrenshospitaloakland.org or call 510-428-3043. Coming up, we'll take an in-depth look at the cranial facial program with Dr. Bryant Toth. We'll be right back.